Hello, Dark and Twisty listeners. Thank you so much for the reviews this month. It's so lovely to be able to feel your support. You can also share the love this Valentine's weekend by sharing your favourite story with a friend. Pick whatever one you love the best and uh, send it to somebody who might not have listened yet. You could also buy me a cup of tea on ko-fi.com. That's ko-fi.com slash voxchops. V-O-X-C-H-O-P-S. Uh, keep safe, keep listening, and uh, let's have another story. La, da, 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 da. La, da, da. Pull up a chair by the fireside. I'm going to tell you a story, but it's not for the faint of heart. My name is Julia Norton, and you're listening to Dark and Twisty Tales, a weekly telling of the lesser-known and more grisly folk stories and fairy tales. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I shall begin. Tamlin Young Tamlin was son of Earl Murray, and Bird Janet was daughter of Dunbar, Earl of March. And when they were young, they loved one another, and plighted their troth. But when the time came near for their marrying, Tamlin disappeared, and no one knew what had become of him. Many, many days after he had disappeared, Bird Janet was wandering in Carterhall Wood, though she had been warned not to go there. And as she wandered, she plucked the flowers from the bushes. She came at last to a bush of broom and began plucking it. She had not taken more than three flowerettes when up by her side started young Tamlen. "'Where come ye from, Tamlen, Tamlen?' Bird Janet said. "'And why have you been away so long?' "'From Elfland I come,' he said." The Queen of Elfland has made me her knight. But how did you get there, Tamlen? said Bird Janet. I was hunting one day, and as I rode Widdishins round yon hill, a deep drowsiness fell upon me, and when I awoke, behold, I was in Elfland. Fair is that land, and gay, and fain I would stop, but for thee, and one other thing. Every seven years the elves pay their tithe to the nether world, and for all the queen makes much of me, I fear it is myself that will be the tithe. Oh, can you not be saved? Tell me if aught I can do will save you, Tamlin. One only thing is there for my safety. Tomorrow night is Halloween, and the fairy court will ride through England and Scotland, and if you could borrow me from Elfland, you must take your stand by Miles Cross between twelve and one of the night, and with holy water in your hand, you must cast a compass all around you. But how shall I know you, Tamlin? quoth Bird Janet, amid so many nights I've ne'er seen before. The first court of elves, let that come and pass. The next court you shall pay reverence to, but do naught, nor say aught. But the third court that comes by is the chief court of them, and at the head rides the queen of all Elfland. And I shall ride by her side, upon a milk-white steed, with a star in my crown. They give me this honour as being a christened knight." Watch my hands, Janet. The right one will be gloved, but the left one will be bare, and by that token you will know me. But but how to save you, Tamlin? quoth Bird Janet. You must spring upon me suddenly, and I will fall to the ground. Then seize me quick, and whatever change befall me, for they will exercise all their magic on me, cling hold to me till they turn me into a red-hot iron. Then cast me into this pool, and I will be turned back into a mother-naked man. Cast then your green mantle over me, and I shall be yours, and be of the world again. So Bird Janet promised to do all for Tamlin, and next night at midnight she took her stand by Miles Cross, and cast a compass around her with holy water. Soon there came riding by the elfin court, 
First, over the mound went a troop on black steeds, and then another troop on brown. But in the third court, all on milk-white steeds, she saw the Queen of Elfland, and by her side a knight with a star in his crown, with right hand gloved and the left bare. <laughs> then she knew this was her own Tamlin, and springing forward she seized the bridle of the milk-white steed and pulled its rider down, and as soon as he had touched the ground she let go the bridle and seized him in her arms. He's won! He's won amongst us all! shrieked out the eldritch crew, and all came around her and tried their spells on young Tamlin. First, they turned him in Janet's arms like frozen ice, then into a huge flame of roaring fire. Then again the fire vanished and an adder was skipping through her arms, but still she held on. And then they turned him into a snake that reared up as if to bite her, and yet she held on. Then suddenly a dove was struggling in her arms and almost flew away. Then they turned him into a swan. But all was in vain, till at last he was turned into a red-hot glaive. And this she cast into a well of water, and then he turned back into a mother-naked man. She quickly cast her green mantle over him, and young Tamlin was Bird Janet's forever. Then sang the Queen of Elfland, as the court turned away and began to resume its march. She that has borrowed young Tamlin Has gotten a stately groom She has taken away my bonniest knight Left nothing in his room But had I known Tamlin, Tamlin A lady would borrow thee I'd a taken out thy two grey eyne And put into eye of tree Had I but known Tamlin, Tamlin Before we came from home I'd a taken out thy heart of flesh and put in a heart of stone had i but the wit yesterday that i have got today i'd have paid the fiend seven times his tint uh, you'd been one of And then the elfin court rode away, and Bird Janet and young Tamlin went on their way homewards, and were soon after married, after young Tamlin had been again saned by the holy water and made Christian once more. Had I but the wit yesterday that I have got today, I'd a paid the fiend seven times his tint, uh, you'd been one away. Thank you for listening to Dark and Twisty Tales. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe on iTunes, rate, review and share with all your friends. You can also get more information about me, Julia Norton, at julianorton.com. So, until the next time, bye. <laughs>